Hi, this is Penny Reagan at Holistic Liberty, holisticliberty.net, maybe. I uh, had to change my card, my old card, I had to cancel, and I never updated my information, so currently uh, Holistic Liberty is not online, and I may or may not. I'm camping at Lake Ray Robert right now. It's very, very beautiful out there. And I don't know how well you can see it because, yeah. Okay. Let me see something. I'm still experimenting with this. Okay, I think I just took my picture. <laughs> okay, anyway. It's um, 6.31. I can prove it. Still trying to learn this. Yeah, see that's backwards. <laughs> Or perhaps just look at my phone. See? That's the backwards. I was thinking about this morning. I'm sure a lot of people have had a lot of interesting things happen in their life. And I know that, especially in an atheist community, I can understand why they ask for people to prove what they believe and stuff like that. But I'm not talking about belief right now. I'm talking about actual experiences in life. Some of them may seem supernatural, and there might be a very logical reason for them, experiences. But you can't always prove what your experiences are. Given the story of when I was a little girl, and I believe I was in first grade, and you know, at lunchtime, you know, you had this tray of food, and if there was a roll on it, they would have like this slice of bread, a uh, slice of butter in between like a little wax thing with a little wax piece of paper on it and you know I was young and the girl sitting across the table from me insisted that I threw my butter on the floor I did not but my butter was on the floor now they called, like, you know, they always had, like, fifth graders, you know, run the cafeteria, and they called, you know, one of the fifth graders that, you know, I'm not run the cafeteria, but, you know, run around, and, and if there's any problem or there's any need or something, they'd come over, and if you need something, they would take care of it, and they called one of them over, and they said, uh, now, Penny threw her butter on the floor, and I said, I did not throw my butter on the floor, because I didn't throw my butter on the floor. But the evidence was the butter was not on my tray and it was on the floor. And how it got on the floor, I didn't know. And the young girl, uh, the fifth grader asked me, you know, so how did your butter get on the floor? Because she looked down, the girls pointed out where the butter was and well, how did your butter get on the floor? I don't know, I replied. Well, you had to have thrown it on the floor. No, I did not throw my butter on the floor. Yes, you did. No, I did not. And these girls insisted. She threw her butter on the floor. So the fifth grader had taken me to the cafeteria lady and told the cafeteria lady that I threw my butter on the floor and that the evidence was the butter was not on my tray and it was on the floor. 
and that I would not admit that I threw my butter on the floor. And the cafeteria lady said, why did you throw your butter on the floor? And I says, I did not throw my butter on the floor. Well, why was your butter on the floor? I don't know. Well, why did you throw your butter on the floor? I didn't. You threw your butter on the floor. Why did you throw your butter on the floor? I did not throw my butter on the floor. So, during that argument, the, the cafeteria lady reached down, and she grabbed me by the shirt like this, and she picked me up, and she put me eyeball to eyeball to her. And I'm scared at this point. And she said to me, why did you throw your butter on the floor? And she gave me three possible answers as to why I may have thrown my butter on the floor. And to be honest, I, I don't remember what those possible answers were. I just remember being scared and picking one of the three. And once I did, she put me down and she's like, okay, just wanted to know why you did it. And I went back to my seat. Well, here's the thing. The evidence showed that I threw my butter on the floor. The proof, the fact that the butter was in my tray and it's on the floor, that there is no butter in my tray. So that says that the butter in my tray is missing and there's butter on the floor. That's where they figured they had their proof. Now, I could have used my butter. That could be why the butter in my tray was missing, but I did not. But there were no further questions. Just that was the proof, that was the evidence, so I must be lying. But I wasn't. I did not throw the butter on the floor. Probably those two girls did. But I didn't see them, so how would I know? However, the questions that were never asked is why am I so insistent that I did not throw the butter on the floor? Why would I throw the butter on the floor? And, well, I guess that was asked, but I didn't have a reason. So if I didn't have a reason why I would have thrown the butter on the floor, you know, if I threw the butter on the floor, why wouldn't I just give a reason for it? Why did I have to be bullied out of a reason? And that's exactly what happened. That cafeteria lady bullied me out of a reason. But here's a better question. Why do those girls even care? Why was it so important to them that I, th you know, that I threw the butter on the floor? Why was it such their concern? How did they know I did it? Why did they have to report it? Why was it a big deal to those two girls? Those questions were never asked. Okay? The point of this story, and it is a true story, is sometimes there may appear to be evidence of something, but the evidence is false. You know? Well, I mean, it was evident the butter was not on my dish. It was evident the butter was on the floor. That was a fact. So I guess I said that wrong. Wouldn't the, the evidence was real. The evidence was the butter was on the floor. The evidence was the butter was not on my tray. And I didn't have anything to prove that I did not throw the butter on the floor. It may not have been even my butter. I mean, I may have used it and don't remember it, but I don't think I did. But the point is, so the conclusion of that is I threw the butter on the floor, but the conclusion is wrong. So that's what I really should say. The conclusion that I threw the butter on the floor was wrong. But no other questions were asked. Now, this is my experience. Can I prove now that that really happened? No, I can't prove it. 
Did it really happen? Yes, it really happened. So not everything can be proven. And not all evidence Okay, how do I do that? Not everything can be proven. And not all conclusions to evidence are correct. Now granted, when it comes to science, and they get a lot of credibility because they will ask the other questions. They don't just, okay, the butter's on the floor, she must have done it. Uh, science would have asked the other questions. Science would have asked why is she so insistent that she did not throw the butter on the floor when it would have been easier just for her to say she did. Uh, science would have asked why were those girls so persistent that she threw the butter on, why did they care that the butter was on the floor? How did they notice? Why was it even an issue? Science would have asked all those other questions, okay? So I will admit to that. But even with all questions asked, sometimes the conclusion to the evidence can be incorrect. And sometimes there are things that actually happened. The experience actually happened. The event actually happened. But it cannot be proven. And that's kind of what I'm, you know, wanting to talk about is that we've all had experiences in our lives. Every one of us. And some of those experiences may be phenomenal in a way. They, they may be extremely interesting stories that I would love to listen to. But they can't be proven. And just because they cannot be proven does not mean they didn't happen. At the same time, there are people who lie to make an interesting story because they want to appear to be interesting. So it's like, do you believe it or do you not believe it? Witnesses aren't always credible. In the sixth grade, in gym class, there was a young girl who was giving me a hard time. I was trying, it was in the locker room, and I was, I was trying not to get involved with it. I just wanted to get dressed. It was at the end of class and get on with my class. She was just giving me a hard time. And it turned out to be an argument. I'm not sure this part. I think it had to do with my yearbook because my yearbook was stolen. I'm pretty sure. I had a, I had just bought a yearbook it could be two different stories mixed up, but I do know at one point I bought a yearbook and then in my gym class it turned up missing. It could be that she was taking my yearbook and claimed it was hers. I don't know, because I had just bought it. But all I know is there was a big argument started and we were in, um, the gym teacher wanted to know what was going on. I told her my side, but the girl told her her side. But the girl had a witness. And the witness, of course, you know, they collaborated together, and the witness, of course, said, you know, this is, you know, what she's saying is true. The point, the, but, but, but the evidence, you know, she had a witness, but the, but the thing was, is it was a lie. She was a false witness. She was lying for her friend. And so the gym teacher told me, I have to believe her, because she has a witness. You don't. And... I couldn't argue with that, even though I knew what the truth was, and so did they. So witnesses aren't always credible either. So I've gotten to where you, people can talk about their experiences, and they can be phenomenal experiences and hard to believe, but it doesn't mean the experience didn't happen. And if it's something that could be considered supernatural, perhaps that it was supernatural, or perhaps it appeared to be supernatural and there was no other explanation 
and if you could find a logical explanation or do if it was possible to do some investigation and find out what was behind it you know there might be something a logical explanation but regardless you can't take from the experience if somebody had an experience no matter what kind of phenomenal experience it is, whether or not you want to believe it, you can't take from the experience. You, you can say, well, I don't think your explanation as to why the experience, you know, what caused it is legit, but you can't take from the experience. And you can say, well, prove to me that you experienced that. Everybody has had experiences in their past and because it's part of their past unless they've had pictures or videos or something you can't prove all your experiences you just can't but you can learn from them and if it's important enough maybe you can investigate it yourself but it's really difficult to prove everything in your life. And especially when I was younger where you didn't have, you know, video cameras. And I used to carry a tape recorder around, but I didn't always have it on. You know, you didn't always have a phone that you can record this stuff. I just wanted to share that. Have a lovely day.